boys, it's graduation day. We are officially graduating in the RX-7 from the stock boring seats, which admittedly are in absolutely insane condition. For This car is a 1995. 1995, that's... 95, 2005. That's like almost 30 years. These seats are in fact in such good condition that I think that they were removed for aftermarket seats at some point when the car did live its life in Japan. It has to be the only explanation for how good of condition those seats are in, but check this out, dude. The Recaros, dude. Oh my gosh. Like they have no business looking that good in here, dude. Let's go. The only problem is I gotta use this thing now. I think these seats were originally probably more of like a black color and they've just slowly faded over time, which hides the dust and dirt just a little bit more. These seats, you can see every spick and span of dirt in here. I'm gonna have to keep this thing in the glove box like an idiot now. I feel like a lot of my builds have been kinda, they've been kinda quick and dirty. Actually, fun fact, I had an RX-8 in high school, so I've always been a rotary boy at heart. This car is the long-term play. I don't want it to be quick and dirty like some of the other builds that I've done. This is the long-term play. Of course, it's raining. I am not. Um, well. Also, not that it even really matters, but these things weigh a ton. And these weigh like literally absolutely nothing. It's crazy like how light they are because it's a full fiberglass shell on the back. So we're gonna do some quick math. Two plus two is four. Uh, this is the easiest way I know how to do it. 233 even. So we're gonna go with this seat, 264. And with the new Recaro pole position, we are 249.6, bro. So check this out, 264 minus 233. That means the stock seats were 31 pounds a piece. That makes it 62 pounds total. But if we drop that to 249.6, for the Recaro pole positions, minus the weight with the camera, 233. That's 16.6 .6 pounds. Times that by two, minus out these 62 pounds. We're losing 28.8 pounds of unsprung weight. 30 pounds, bro. 30 pounds, it's like, it's like my five-year-old. Oh, <laughs> what do I owe the pleasure? Just kidding, I called you. You did? Yeah. I just showed up. Oh, that's sick, dude. That's awesome. Also, can we talk about the fact that your camera is safely nestled and Where'd my kid go? What did you think? Where's Austin? <laughs> so good news and bad news. Good news, Luke is here. Bad news, oh. Corvette. Uh, we had those fitment issues. I've talked about them before. So we're going to pick it up because good news, it's fixed. <laughs> Luke won $1,000. I won $1,000. Just when I was feeling good, Luke strolls in here like he owns the place and won exactly $1,195.67. Oh, that's big money, okay. Thank you, Steph. Dude, okay, but here's the real question. How much have you lost? How much have I lost? Yeah. Zero dollars. Zero? $100, they matched it with your code, and I won $1,195. So stupid. <laughs> so you guys remember prize picks from my last video. How it works is super easy. You pick two to five players. In my case, I did the NBA. Luke has dabbled in like baseball, Rocket League, all sorts of stuff, but overall, it works the exact same in each sport. If they score more or less than the prize picks projection, you can win 10 times your money on any entry. See, and the funny thing about this is that neither of us know anything about sports, especially Luke. Somehow, he won a thousand bucks. I don't I don't know. He said something about the weather. Like he's betting on the weather. On the weather. <laughs> the weather. Do you think that sounds crazy? I don't know crap about sports, but I bet on golf. I assume that they're gonna get less birdies than normal. So I looked at the weather and uh, it was raining where they were playing, so I assume they're gonna play worse, which they did, and I won five hundred bucks. And if you guys have aspirations of being a millionaire someday, one prize fix user is actually chosen every day all the way through the end of the NBA playoffs to get entered for a chance to win one million dollars. And what's so funny about this whole thing is that literally both Luke and I have won just using promotional credits. Because when you open an account using my code Stefan at the first link down below, the first $100 that you deposit is gonna get matched by prize picks up to $100 and you can play with that first. It's like you're not even playing with your own money. First link in the description down below, make a shout out to prize picks. I'll see you guys in there. Yo, this car's actually been gone for a couple weeks. I'm so stoked to have it back. Also, check this out. I am a man of class now. If you've ever owned a steering wheel that's either Alcantara or like suede, you get it. But if you don't, if you put your greasy little meat mittens on the suede, it starts tearing it up in like a day. Hence, the driving glove or man of class.
Let me just level with you guys for a minute. So many of you in the comments were like getting mad at me for pulling the Pro Charger off. It's like, Stefan, why'd you build that car? Why'd you pull the Pro Charger off? If you didn't see that video, it's because we're starting to drive the track a lot more. So we pulled the Pro Charger off. We actually got the car retuned as well. And the power is just like, it's so linear now. Like I used to lose traction like right around four and a half to five K when I had the Pro Charger on there because it was making a thousand wheel horsepower, which is just stupid. And don't get me wrong, stupid is fun, but stupid is not fun when you get your car impounded. I'm gonna be towing the car. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. On the real though, one of the best daily drivers out there, the AMG Boy. So Corvette's picked up, RX-7 has the new seats in it. Now I have a very exciting new surprise for you guys. Welcome to my new home. I know what you guys are thinking and yes, we are kind of quite literally out in the middle of nowhere. This is in Tooele, Utah. Tooele is about an hour away from my house. So yes, quite literally in the middle of nowhere, but a perfect place for race car things. Anybody can get it. Anybody who listens to intercoms and the tennis, get them gone. Now I've been talking to you guys for a while about the idea, the possibility of turning the C6 into a track car. Well, that's been going swimmingly. I've been so stoked to get the car out on the track. It feels like it's where it belongs. That car has gone through so many different phases. The 700 horsepower version when I first bought it out in Tennessee. Then we blew up the motor, rebuilt it back up, bigger pro charger, made a thousand, and it was a stupid straight line car. Now it's in its third and what I think is the final stage the track monster. So we are officially tenants here at Utah Motorsports Campus. They have a full track that they split up into different configurations. The cart track is right back here. They have drifting over there on the skid pad. They have the day garages out here. Our garage is right over there. Now, I know a lot of you guys were super bummed when I got rid of my warehouse. I loved that space. It was so much fun, it was so cool, but it was a lot of space to myself. And as you guys know, I wanted to spend a lot more time out at the track, so something like this started to just make a lot more sense. I officially present to you guys the new warehouse. Look, I come from a city, you hear signs when we sleep. Heaven sent, hands down, vibes so unique. Play they part, so my part is play for keeps. Uh, why I a kid, but I never saw the ease. Oh, yeah, go me keys. Oh, yeah, on the table, age 10. Look at me. Oh, yeah, I seen things that'll make it hard to speak. Oh, yeah, I've been fighting all my battles from my knees. Oh, yeah, uh, looking up way to the sky, and it's big and it's high. You know where it is going. So, quite the reveal, right? And quite a step up from the last garage that we had out by my house. If I'm being honest, it started to feel really lonely out there. Of course, I had homies and friends stop by, but it seemed like everybody just kind of had their own garage versus this place, the new home of the C6, my new home for motorsports and all things related, the Riot Garage. So this is out here at Utah Motorsports Campus. It's owned by my homie, Michael Shumway, and I am an official tenant here at the Riot Garage. And everybody kind of shares this space. And one of the coolest things about this space is just how like, I can't think of another word other than just like synergistic. Like everybody is just such good friends. Everybody's such good homies. Everybody just kind of supports each other. Everybody's here to race. Everybody here loves cars. And it's just such a good vibe all around. I'm so stoked to finally be a part of it, to have a home, a permanent home for the C6 for the time being. This is also gonna save me a ton in things like tires and brakes, things in that department, just because I don't have to cart the car back and forth from my house to the track. It can live out here at the track. I can savor every little bit of life that is left in the tires and the brake setup. But you may notice something. I am definitely the minority here. We have the C6 Corvette, the screaming bald eagles, Mr. America himself, and literally a room, a room full of Porsches. In probably the next video, I'll do a full tour of the garage, including like what's on the other side of the building, a quick rundown of all the cars. I mean, we've got Cayman Cayman, uh, 911 Cup car, Street Cup, Street Cup, E46 M3, E46 M3. The paint is also looking absolutely fire. I had some stupid tape on the front this last track weekend because I accidentally got the front bumper and fenders repainted right before our track day. So when we got rid of my old warehouse, I said that we were gonna be buying a new house with a bigger garage. That is still the plan. If you know right now, interest rates are kind of 
wonky. The economy is a little bit weird right now, so we're gonna hold off on that just for the time being until things kind of stabilize out. But this was a fantastic solution for now, and I couldn't be more stoked to be here. So we've got a lot to do out here at the track. We have a lot to do on the C6. I think a wrap is in the near future because the track is a dirty, dirty place. It's, <laughs> it's getting all the new paint completely filthy. So drop your wrap recommendations down below. Say that five times fast wrap rep recommendations. <laughs> Whether we just do one full solid color or we do some kind of like crazy livery. I love Jesse's look. It's the white on white. He's got the gloss white for the body and then matte white on the graphics. It looks so gangster. Or we go with my homie Austin's look with a full livery. It just looks absolutely wild, especially on a full race car. We'll talk a little bit more about this in the future. Austin is actually a three time national champion uh, time attack driver and he's been my coach. I've been super fortunate to have him as my coach in learning how to drive the C6 on the track the last little bit. So uh, a little bit more on that later. But as usual, if you made it this far in the video, you're a real one. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the bell. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video.